A warm greeting, today is Sunday, August 20, 2023. This is Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 5 o'clock in the afternoon in the Eastern Caribbean region, where we are monitoring the newly formed Tropical Storm Franklin. The seventh tropical storm of the season formed in the waters of the Caribbean just south of Puerto Rico and is associated with what was Invest 90. As I mentioned this morning, in the afternoon hours, a Hurricane Hunter aircraft was investigating the circulation of what was Invest 90 and found that it had a closed circulation at low levels of the atmosphere, as well as sustained winds of 45 miles per hour. That's why the National Hurricane Center has just classified this cyclone as Tropical Storm Franklin. As you know, it is projected that this cyclone will be moving west-northwest over the next 36 hours and then take a turn over the region of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, where it would be arriving on Tuesday afternoon. Although it is expected to be a tropical storm when it reaches the Dominican Republic region, excessive rainfall is forecasted that could cause serious flooding across Haiti and the Dominican Republic, with the potential to become a catastrophic event. Our followers in the Dominican Republic and Haiti should take this situation very seriously. Despite being a tropical storm, rainfall accumulations are expected to exceed 400 mm. It's a very serious situation, and please stay tuned to this video to see the expected effects throughout the local region. For Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, some outer bands are affecting weather conditions with heavy showers and gusts of wind up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. This will be the scenario for the next two to three days, but at least sustained tropical storm force winds will remain to the south of the island. With the forecast that it will pass directly over the Hispaniola Center, the possibility of a closer pass has been ruled out, so there's no longer a risk of a direct impact from this cyclone. As I mentioned this morning, there were different scenarios, with the most probable one being a trajectory over the Dominican Republic and Haiti. The other two scenarios involved a stronger system crossing over the east of the Dominican Republic while a weaker one would cross over Haiti. Now, with the data from the Hurricane Hunter aircraft, the models have better consensus. Here we can see the trajectory from different specialized models. Notice that there is a lot of consensus in maintaining a west-northwest movement for the next 24 hours, but then taking a turn completely northward, crossing over the western Dominican Republic. Something that benefits Puerto Rico is that this turn will be completely northward, unlike what was shown previously with a northeastward movement that could have brought more rain to the region. For the Dominican Republic, this is the worst-case scenario since the right side of the circulation would cover the entire country, causing heavy showers and excessive rainfall throughout the Dominican territory. It's anticipated to then move northeastward but quite far from Puerto Rico. However, instability will continue across the region basically throughout the week. There's also good consensus in the intensity models. It's anticipated that there will be gradual strengthening over the next few days. When it reaches the Dominican Republic and Haiti, it should be a tropical storm with maximum sustained winds of about 105 km per hour. Some models even show the possibility of it becoming a hurricane when it's located north of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. However, from that point, it's expected to move northeastward, away from the area. Here is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. It will continue moving west-northwest at least until the early hours of Tuesday, then take a complete turn northward, reaching the southern Dominican Republic around 2 p.m. on Tuesday. It will then spend approximately 12 to 16 hours crossing over the Dominican Republic. By the afternoon of Wednesday, it should be near the Bahamas region, and then move into the Atlantic waters, becoming a hurricane during Thursday afternoon. You can see in yellow that a tropical storm watch has been issued for the entire southern coast of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Most likely, within the next 12 hours, this watch will be upgraded to a tropical storm warning. Additionally, there's good consensus among the members of the GFS model. You can see that the consensus is quite similar to the trajectory indicated by the National Hurricane Center. While the GFS model ensemble has a trajectory slightly westward with a much weaker system. However, the National Hurricane Center indicates that the official forecast is more similar to the American model due to the fact that the European model underestimated the intensity of this system during today. The global models also align well with this forecast. The GFS model predicts a moderate to strong tropical storm entering between Barahona and Santo Domingo during the night hours of Tuesday. In contrast, the European model predicts a very weak system moving over Haiti. But remember, we are disregarding this possibility because we already have a tropical storm, and the European model in its latest run underestimated the intensity of this cyclone. We'll be attentive to the new run this afternoon to see if it aligns with the other models. The German model aligns with the American model and the forecast from the National Hurricane Center. It estimates that the center of circulation will reach the Southern Dominican Republic and Haiti on Tuesday night, very close to the border of both countries. It's important to mention that for the cities of Barahona, 
Santo Domingo, and La Romana, this trajectory is the worst case since the strongest winds will be on the right side of the circulation. Moreover, the southerly wind flow will bring a lot of moisture from the Caribbean region, causing serious flooding across the southern and eastern parts of the Dominican Republic. Regarding the winds, you can see that gusts of wind between 100 to 110 km per hour are projected, affecting basically the entire Dominican Republic, especially during Tuesday afternoon and extending throughout Wednesday. You can see that with this new trajectory, the island of Puerto Rico will be far from tropical storm force winds. For our followers in the Dominican Republic, more than the wind, what concerns us are the rainfall accumulations. The GFS model is predicting rainfall accumulations between 300 to 400 mm, mainly in the southern and eastern regions of the country. The European model also aligns with this forecast. The probabilities of this extreme and potentially catastrophic event occurring are high, so please start preparations and move to a safe place if you live in a flood-prone area. For Puerto Rico, the estimated accumulated rainfall over the next few days has significantly decreased with this new trajectory. At the moment, it's projected that the southern, southeastern, and eastern sectors of the island could receive between 3 to 4 inches of rain over the next 72 hours. In some places, accumulations could reach up to 6 inches. There is still a risk of flooding, but it's lower than what we previously forecasted. Well, with this, I bid farewell. Here at Hurricane Info, I will continue to monitor the evolution of Tropical Storm Franklin. Especially for our followers in the Dominican Republic and Haiti, and to ensure you don't miss any of the videos I'll be recording over the next few days, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the red button below the video. Then, click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new videos. Well, with that, I bid you farewell. Until next time.